Hey, all you bitizens of the internet, welcome to Learn a Bit. In our last video, we began a short interview series on obsessive compulsive disorder with the executive director of the International OCD Foundation, Dr. Jeff Shemansky, and national OCD advocate Ethan Smith. We explored what obsessive compulsive disorder is, as well as the many subtypes and forms it can take. Today, in response to a number of inaccurate claims recently made online by popular influencers about the causes and treatments for OCD, we're going to be asking the question, do we know what causes OCD? And hopefully, we'll bust a bunch of myths about it along the way. Let's get into it. All right, please welcome back the International OCD Foundation's incredible duo, Dr. Jeff Shemansky and Ethan Smith. I have to mention somewhere in here that I want to be taller, just so you can make me taller. You know, I love being 8-bit. If only I were taller and stronger and, you know, had a fuller beard. <laughs> yeah, I can add in like a little Mario mushroom growth sound right there. Yeah, that would be awesome. That. All right, so let's jump right into our question today. So do we know what causes OCD? Does the research show that there are certain risk factors or triggers that might make it more likely in someone? Yeah, so, so we have some clues, right? No one really understands why anyone develops uh, any mental illness, actually. There are some clues, though. So, uh, so we start very biologically with genetics, how we're built. If you have OCD, you have a one in four chance of one of your kids having OCD. So there is something about our genetics and how we're built uh, that it can be inherited to a certain degree. Again, one out of four. Um, but that isn't the only thing that, that contributes to it. Neurobiology, how your brain functions. When we take pictures of people's brains, when they have OCD, we compare them to people without OCD. We see a difference in how some of the circuitry is. We have an overactive circuit for people with OCD that is connected to their, their, how they're processing emotions, right? So we have neurobiology, we have genetics, we again, and then how we're, we are in our environment, what we're learning, what we're seeing around us. And so you have this kind of mix of factors um, that are contributing to the onset of OCD, but we can't predict who's going to get it. We don't know who's going to get it. Even if it runs in a family, we don't know who, who might have it. I was just talking with someone the other day. He has twin boys. One has identical twins. One has OCD. The other does not. Um, so again, we have some clues, but we don't know for sure. So while it sounds like we don't know exactly what does cause OCD yet, it sounds like we do know a lot about what doesn't cause OCD. Can we debunk some outdated and pseudoscientific explanations for the disorder here for viewers? Definitely not unresolved trauma. That's the most recent on social media. Yeah, yeah I mean, the one that drives me the craziest because I've, I've worked with so many clients with OCD who spent five and 10 and 20 years in traditional talk therapy trying to find the root cause of their OCD. And, and at its worst, and I like psychodynamic therapy, and I think it's very helpful for a lot of people. It is not helpful for people with OCD. We are not going to find that how you were potty trained is why you have developed OCD. So it's not mom and dad's fault. It's not how you were potty trained. And it's not, there's no root cause to OCD. There, there can be core fears, and those are different things. So yeah, I, I now that Jeff said it, it it, it sparked a memory, which was um, I went through uh, seventeen years of psychodynamic therapy looking for the root cause. Um, most of my therapists believed that it was a trauma that I didn't remember, and we constantly rehashed what my life looked like from zero to ten years old, looking for that nugget that was buried subconsciously, waiting for it to come out so I could finally discover what it was and release that trauma. Um, but I did have uh, a doctor that firmly believed that it was um, something that had happened to me in a past life um, that I had at the time, I had really severe health anxiety and was really afraid of, of developing a number of diseases and disorders and, and, and all kinds of things. So this doctor was, was pretty insistent on the idea that I had died a brutal and painful death from some sort of plague or flu uh, hundreds of years ago, and that 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 past life experience was manifesting in some way now, and gave me a irrational fear of sickness and uh, disease and health in general. So we were trying to determine where in my past life that had happened and how to resolve it. Yeah, incidentally, that that didn't work. 
And, and again, you know, when you talk with people about OCD and their symptoms, it might be something like I'm very attached to my parents and my OCD symptoms uh, kind of revolve around my parents, but it, it's pretty tenuous and pretty random what people's OCD symptoms uh, tend to be uh, linked to. I also think what's interesting is we need to keep the why separate between the researchers and the individuals with OCD because individuals with OCD, we are always looking for the why. Why do I think this? Why do I feel this way? What's the answer? How do I figure it out? We really want to apply logic to OCD when really OCD is completely illogical. And so logic just makes it stronger. Um, and so, you know, the why, why do we have OCD? Where does it come from? I think that's important from a research perspective. If we want to later tap into the human genome or do some sort of DNA sequencing to try to eliminate it, you know, from a research and science perspective, why is important for actual treatment and individuals with OCD, the last thing we want to focus on is why. Yeah, I mean, something related to that, a myth that we hear a lot about is people with OCD are engaged in these behaviors because they want to, right? They enjoy them. They're quirky. No one with OCD wants to be doing these behaviors. They're doing them in a desperate attempt to kind of get away from the distress that they're experiencing. I, I think that it's also worth pointing out that, um, you know, some of the reasons that the mainstream media and the public think OCD is, you know, hand washing, checking, um, symmetry, you know, is because that's all that's talked about. You know, when there's research shows that some of the other subtypes and symptoms that we talked about, intrusive, uh, violent intrusive sexual thoughts, may be even more pervasive um, and, and, and more common than some of the other uh, subtypes that we hear about in the media. So there's some of these subtypes that are so heavily stigmatized and individuals living in secrecy um, that it's so important to talk about them as common within the OCD world so people can feel like they can come out and talk about it in a safe space and get help for it. The thing that holds OCD symptoms together the most is that on average, but not always on average, it seems to be centered on things that you care a lot about. Um, and it seems to kind of go after your weakness. Uh, Lee Bear talked about this in his, his book, Imp of the Mind, that whatever you cherish the most, your OCD seems to kind of at attack. Um, and again, it's not, it's not all the time. Uh, it's not consistent, but I would say that's probably the strongest theme I've, I've heard across working with many different people. Strangely, I don't care if anything happens to Jeff. True. So he has no OCD symptoms. No love. No love. <laughs> so it sounds like a key distinction here is that people with OCD aren't so much fighting an urge to act on the obsessions they have. It sounds like it's actually a fear of these thoughts and the fear of what if. So, for example, if someone has intrusive thoughts that they can't get rid of, that they might attack and kill someone, for example, they don't actually have any desire or urge to do that. Quite the opposite, actually. It sounds like they have a desire not to harm anybody and are afraid of their own thoughts. Yeah, I mean, this is what the shame and the isolation is about with OCD and why people go for many years sometimes without getting treatment, is that it feels like your mind has betrayed you right? You identify yourself as a certain kind of person. And now you're having all these thoughts and images and urges that are completely counter to who you are. And not only are they counter to who you are, and they're abhorrent to you, you know that other people aren't going to accept the, the, these things about you. And again, the, the core of the treatment is thoughts are just thoughts. Just because you have a thought doesn't mean anything. Unfortunately, some treatments think that thoughts actually have meaning. Actually, in OCD, they don't. And so, so again, one of the core uh, aspects of effective treatment is learning to recognize a thought as a thought. Maybe it's telling you something helpful. Maybe it's not. Just because you have it doesn't mean it's telling you something true or accurate. It's just telling you, maybe, maybe not. Pay attention. All right. So as we've learned today, Obsessive compulsive disorder is a very complicated disorder, which has many, many factors to it. While we don't know exactly what does cause OCD yet, there are a lot of myths out there about it that we can disprove. And everybody has troubling thoughts, but at the end of the day, like Jeff said, thoughts are just thoughts, and it's always okay to ask for help. 
If you or a loved one would like to know more, I've put a link to OCD resources in the description below. On our next video in this interview series, we'll be talking about getting effective treatment for OCD and what that looks like. Subscribe to my channel to be sure you don't miss it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you guys believe that this video deserved a like or a comment, that would be greatly appreciated. This has been Learn a Bit. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.